So the most fundamental aspect of electricity, the things with the the stuff which actually started all of this was static electricity. What is static electricity? It is electricity which is not really moving. Let's understand how it is produced, how it is made. We'll again go back to a very basic thing, something which is there in all the matter and that is atom. It is the most basic aspect of all the matter that we see around us. What is this atom made of? Well, you might already know that this atom is made up of two basic components. There is a nucleus at the center and then there are these electrons which go around this nucleus. Of course, the nucleus is again made up of neutrons and protons, right? So inside this nucleus, there are two other basic particles, neutrons and protons. If you look at it, the neutrons are not really important from an electricity point of view, but protons are indeed important. These electrons and these protons have a very special property, which is known as charge. Now, it is a very basic intrinsic property, just like the mass we have, right? The mass of my mass, all the, all the material that you see around you has mass and the property mass of an object, right? The property called mass of an object give, gives it the, its weight. So mass is a basic property. It is an intrinsic property of an, of an object. You cannot question where it comes from, <laughs> right? We cannot really question that. Similarly, charge is also a very basic property of an object, of, a, of these particles, electrons and protons. They have this property called charge. We are not really questioning where it comes from. We just accept it that there is, they have this property called charge. Another thing to note is the charge on this electron is really different. I know scientists did some experimentation and they understood that the charge of this electron was different than the charge of protons. To keep things sim simple, they just named the charge on the electron as negative and the charge that, what, that was there on the proton as positive. I mean, Understand that this naming was 100% arbitrary. I could have called one Jill and another one Jack. That would have been fine too. I mean, not many people would be happy with that, but it is just a convention. We say that the charge on an electron is negative and the charge on the proton is positive. That's what we are saying. Now, typically, the number of electrons and the number of protons in an atom is the same. If you look at things around you, that is what you would find that number of protons is equal to number of electrons. They each have one unit of charge. Okay, that's what we'll call it. We'll just call it one unit of charge. Whatever it is, we are not bothered about the exact value. We'll just call it that, okay? That's, let's say that they have one unit of charge. So what would happen? The negative charges outside in the electrons, in the electrons, right? The negative charges outside would be completely balanced by the positive charges inside in the nucleus. So on the whole, if you look at the atom, it would be what we say electrically neutral. It doesn't carry any charge. So if you were to measure the charge on, an, on such an atom, it would come out to be zero and you will be very happy, okay, that everything is zero, everything is zero, okay, good. Sometimes, however, what happens is we can excite these electrons. So like there is a, nu there is a nucleus right here and this electron is going around. What I can do is that I can provide extra energy to, to this electron and it would just fly away. Now I have really separated the electron, I'll just say E minus so that it's negative charge from the proton. So I have really separated these two. Now I have a, a nucleus, a, a, a proton, right? A nucleus which is really positively charged and an electron which is really negatively charged and they are different. Now I, now I have created these charges. With these charges, I can produce electricity, right? So once we have separation of charges, then we can do something with it. We can produce electricity. Now, before we move on to understanding more about this static electricity and do some experiment, like which tells us what, how it behaves or whether it really exists or not also, we have to understand some basic properties of these charges. Like I said, electrons and protons, they have different kinds of charges. We call one of them negative and the other one as positive. This we already said. Okay. Now, another thing is whenever I bring a positive and a negative charge together, they attract. There is always an attraction between them. 
if i bring like charges together positive positive and negative negative they'll always repel they'll try to get away right remember how how you if you bring the two poles of magnetic north not you try to bring how what do you feel similarly the like charges they will repel you have to really put some force to keep them together i mean otherwise they would just repel and try to move away from each other the unit of charge is coulomb it is named after charles agustin de coulomb he was a french physicist and he was very important person why because he gave us the laws which tell us how the attraction or repulsion how the forces between these charges how do they behave so he was very important and there is a law in physics known as coulomb's law which is again tells us about the forces between these charged particles so now that we have understood every everything about the charges let's try to create in an experimental situation something where we'll see how the how we can separate out these charges let's try to separate the charges and get a feel for this right just look at some behavior so here i have number of paper bits okay there is small scrap of paper very 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 small and here i have a scale okay this experiment i am pretty sure you must have done if you not done then just do it it's a plastic scale normal regular scale and i'm frantically rubbing on it on my hair you might think that i've gone really crazy i've been hit by electrical current <laughs> but that's not the case i assure you now let's just try to bring it near this oh look what is happening okay so these bits of paper are really attracted to this scale so what has happened here what did i do what am i doing when i am rubbing this my scale against my hair what did i do what did i would i what did i do to actually cause this this attraction okay normally a scale wouldn't do this mind you okay only when i rub it against my hair i am doing something so what happens when i rub this scale against my hair like very frantically okay mind you you have to do that too when i do that then electrons from my hair actually jump and stick to this scale oh, that is literally what is happening this scale is providing energy to those electrons like when i am rubbing it and the electrons are really knocked out from my hair and they jump and stick to this scale which makes this scale really negatively charged okay so that's what happens this scale is now negatively charged now this negatively charged scale can attract those bits of paper which are lying down how the attraction works we'll see it in a little bit in, in the next slide we'll see it but just see see that that, that there is an attraction between this negatively charged scale and the tips very tips of this paper which become sort of positively charged and then they are attracted together right negative and positive they attract and this is the basic principle now you must have seen or you might have actually your teacher might have done this experiment for you at your school the idea is when we rub certain things together there is always one thing which gets positive charge and the other thing which gets negative charge these things you have to remember unfortunately at least a few of those you have to remember because they can be asked in your exam so here are a few things that i have listed which i found important glass rod and silk if you rub them together glass rod would become positively charged the silk would become negatively charged same thing would happen with woolen cloth and ebonite amber and rubber okay and then woolen cloth with plastic same thing would happen and of course dry hair and plastic comb or balloon if i do that then the same thing would happen balloon i am pretty sure you must have used it but the part is rub the balloon and stick it to the wall okay so same thing would happen the hair gets positively charged the electrons are pulled away from here and they stick to the balloon or the plastic comb so that is indeed what is happening here now physicists they don't like any kind of uncertainty they want to be really definitive so to find out when i rub two materials together which of them would become negative and which of them would become positive they created a series this is known as triboelectric series now in this series at the top are the materials which which have the greatest tendency to become positively charged and at the bottom are those materials which have the greatest ten tendency to become highly negative in charge okay so if i rub these two materials together the top material and the bottom material then the top one would become positive the bottom one would become negative and of course this series like i said is known as triboelectric series this effect where we are creating the separation of charges by rubbing is known as triboelectric effect 
the underlying reason for such an effect is that electrons they are greater they have greater affinity towards certain materials than others for example electron have more affinity for this plastic in the scale than my hair unfortunately they don't like my hair so much now like i said at the top are those materials which become uh, highly positive air is an example okay so you should remember this in the middle are those materials which tend to stay neutral they don't get any kind of charge they are very neutral okay they are political <laughs> so cotton and steel are examples of this at the bottom are materials like teflon okay which become very negative in charge when they are rubbed together of course if you google then you can find out the complete list it should be pretty straight forward now of course like you you said um, you saw in our example the charge in this particular scale when i rubbed it did not remain there forever slowly and gradually this the, the plastic it loses the charge and this is known as discharge right very simple it is known as discharge so there is a slow discharge of this uh, the charge on the plastic right? so because the electrons they slowly and gradually lost right they will be lost to the atmosphere or the surface where the scale is kept now i said one of the things which remains a mystery right i i said in the beginning that positive and negative charges they attract we know that negative and negative repel but positive and negative charges they attract when i was doing this scale with this uh, uh, experiment with this scale one of the things that we saw was although the scale i rubbed with my hair and made this negatively charged right we understand that the scale became negatively charged i did not do anything with the paper right so the bits of paper that were kept there the scrap paper scraps right the small bits i did not do anything with those so where did they get their positive charge from right because we really need positive charge to create that attraction where did it come from right that is really a mystery i mean you might go ahead and ask uh, uh, your teachers or your friends but here is one possible answer and that is known as induced charges okay it's not a possible answer it's a definite answer the attraction is caused by something known as induction right so there is a process of induction and the process of induction is this is particular process of induction is induced charges right we are applying it to charges so it is a process of inducing charges and the way it works is this paper clip this bit of paper when i bring it close to the scale right so the scale i charged it so this entire surface is negatively charged we can understand that right this entire surface is negatively charged as soon as i bring this paper this scale close to the paper at the very tip of the paper what would happen Under understand right this negatively charged scale is coming there there are atoms here we understand that there are electrons here we understand that also right at the very tip there would be electrons now those electrons will feel the repulsion from the plastic this plastic scale they'll feel repelled the plastic scale will really push them so they move a little bit down and the very tip because the electrons have moved down earlier it was neutral the very tip of this paper now electrons have really moved down from here so the very tip of this paper it becomes positively charged very tip of this paper and this positively charged tip can now feel attracted or get attracted to our negatively charged scale so that is something which can happen this is known as induced charges because we are not creating charge but we are inducing this charge here is another experiment which i i can do to demonstrate a very simple experiment to demonstrate this induction of charges notice what is happening here this is just a aluminum foil very thin piece of aluminum foil i again rub this scale very very right very very uh, i would have to work hard okay now i rub this and i bring it close to this see what is happening it is expanding right it is expanding as i bring the scale close to this piece of foil these two leaves of foil they move away from each other now this is happening systematically okay this is what is happening and why is it happening it is happening because of the same reason as i bring the negatively charged scale close to this two leaves these two leaves at the very top they become positively charged because of induction and these induced positive charges then repel each other because this also becomes positive charge this also becomes positive charge and these two now 
because they are both positive they will repel and they move away from each other so this is what is happening and of course one thing that you can understand is because these two positively charged leaves right they the positively charged is only there at the bottom right that's what we have that's where we have induced the charge at the very bottom these two positive charges are repelling away from each other the more the positive charge the greater the repulsion so i can sort of measure how much charge i have on these leaves by measuring the distance between these two leaves right i can measure that and this principle right very similar principle is used in a device known as electroscope electroscope is used for measuring the charges right so we saw how this charges how they how we induce the charge positive charge on these two leaves and how they repel each other you can do this experiment very easily at your home too so that is interesting of course the study of these charges is done in a branch of physics known as electrostatics so electrostatics studies the static charges the charges which are not moving in the next section which is of course very very interesting we'll understand moving charges and that is the study of current electricity and we'll be do doing that in our next section